Hi. Now in my earlier tutorials, what I talked to you about was gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. And what I want to do now is bring these concepts together and introduce you to the principle of the conservation of mechanical energy. I also want to introduce you to another principle called the work energy principle. But we'll cover this later. Now, what I've got here is a particle of mass 2 kilograms being released from rest at a height of 10 meters. It falls freely under gravity. And what I want to do is find out what its speed is as it hits the ground. Now, in the past, we've done questions like this using the SUVAT equations, as I call them, when you've got constant acceleration. And what I'll do as well in this tutorial is I'll run through how you can use the SUVAT equations to find that velocity that it hits the ground at. But what I want to do though first is just show you how you can use this law here, the principle of the conservation of mechanical energy. What it is is that when we have no external forces other than gravity doing work on a particle during its motion, the sum of the particle's kinetic and potential energies remains constant. And I can use this principle here because if I assume that there's no air resistance, no work would be done against any resistance, we'd just have the force due to gravity acting on our particle. Then I can take two points in this motion, let's say this point up here which we'll call A, and this level down here on the ground which we'll call B. So what the principle of conservation of mechanical energy is saying is that the gravitational potential energy at A plus the kinetic energy at A must be a constant value. And so therefore, if it's a constant value, that sum must be exactly the same as you get at B. So in other words, the gravitational potential energy at B plus the kinetic energy at B. And what we can do then is say, well, OK, what kind of gravitational potential energy does the particle possess at A? Well, if we take this as our zero level, then it's going to be mgh. So the mass is 2, so we're therefore we're going to have 2 times the acceleration due to gravity, g, times the height, h, 10 meters, 2g times 10. Now, what kinetic energy does it possess up here? Well, none, because it's not moving. It's at rest. So this must be equal to the gravitational potential energy at B, but there is none because we've taken this as the zero level. So there's no height here involved. And then we've got then the kinetic energy at B. So that's going to be a half mv squared. So half multiplied by the mass of 2 times v squared half mv squared. Well, if we take g to be 9.8, then what we end up with here is v squared. Let's just put this down on the left this time. v squared equals, and if you do 2g times 10, g being 9.8, you get 196. We can get v by square rooting this, so v equals square root 196, and that turns out to be 14. 14 meters per second. Okay? Now, I did say that you could have done this just by using our SUVAT equation. So I'll run through that and then I'm going to show you how you can do this problem again by using the work energy principle. I'll talk you through that later. But let's just quickly write down this alternative method so you can compare methods. 
Okay, alternative method, the SUVAT way. Okay, so S remember is displacement, U initial velocity, V the final velocity, A the acceleration, and T the time. S is displacement, so we need to set up a positive direction. Let's have downwards as being positive. So the displacement would be 10, 10 meters. U, the initial velocity, would be 0, 0 meters per second. The final velocity, well that's what we're trying to find. Acceleration due to gravity is G, or 9.8 meters per second per second. And T, we don't know how long it took to drop from here to here. So, okay, we don't know that result. We'll just mark it with a cross there. So how are we going to find this out? The V, well, clearly we want an equation that leaves out T, and that's going to be V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So that's going to mean that U squared is 0, 0 squared is 0, plus 2 times the acceleration which is g multiplied by the displacement s of 10. So you get v squared equals 2g times the 10. Comes out 196. Take g to be 9.8. And so obviously we get v by square rooting 196 and that comes out at 14 meters per second. Not much in it really when you compare these two methods. But you'll find later that when we do problems where there's resistance to motion and problems where motion's not necessarily in a vertical line and acceleration isn't constant, we're going to have to abandon this approach. Okay, so that's okay for now, but uh, as I say, I want to try and introduce you to this idea here. Now, we could do this problem another way anyway. It's by something called the work energy principle. It's this principle here. That the change in the total energy of a particle is equal to the work done on the particle. Now, if I use this principle for this question here, what we do is we look at the gain in kinetic energy first of all. Okay, so we'll just put this down here. Have gain in Ke. Now the gain in kinetic energy is going to be equal to the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. Well, we know kinetic energy is a half mv squared, so it's going to be half the mass, 2 times the final velocity squared. Half mv squared minus the initial kinetic energy, half times the mass times v squared, but v was zero, so that's going to be zero squared. And if you work that out, then it just comes out to be v squared. This term zero, half of two is one, so you just get v squared. Okay, we've got that. That's the gaining Ke, kinetic energy. Now, what happens as the particle drops? It now loses potential energy, gravitational potential en energy. So we talk then of the loss in gravitational potential energy, GPE. All right? And so what's that going to equal? Well, we know that gravitational potential energy is mgh. So we've got m being 2 times g, 9.8 times h being 10. What does this come to? Well, it comes to 196. We should really put these units in, by the way. I seem to have missed those out. Kinetic energy measured in joules. And the same with gravitational potential energy, joules. So, now using the work energy principle, we've got the change in total energy of a particle is equal to the work done on the particle. So let's have a look. What was that work done on the particle? Well, let's just first of all just write down that the change in total energy, or just write just energy here, 
is equal to the work done on the particle. Well that would normally be the work done against resistance. Let's just write it in anyway. Work done against resistance. Just drop to a new line there. So what is the change in energy? Well that's going to be the gain in kinetic energy minus the loss in gravitational potential energy. So therefore we've got V squared minus 196. And we're told that that's equal to the work done against resistance. But in a problem like this, if we assume there wasn't any air resistance, then this is going to be zero. So it's just going to equal zero in this one. Later problems though, when we're doing motion on a rough inclined slope for instance, there will be resistance, friction. So we're going to have to do some examples on this where this won't be zero. But for now, it's zero. And so if we have 196 to both sides, it follows that V squared equals 196. And then just take the square root and it follows that V equals 14 then meters per second. Same answers we had before. Now, some people will not necessarily write it out like this either. What they'll say is that the gain, let's just write it down here, the gain in kinetic energy equals the loss in potential energy because there was no work done on the particle. So you might see that given and that's what we've done here basically. If you were to write the gain in kinetic energy, V squared equals the loss in potential energy, 196. There you go, that line there. So as I say, you might see this written out by uh, teachers or in textbooks, but basically we're saying the same thing, whatever method you use. Okay, well I hope that's given you some understanding, but I would encourage you to have a look at further questions on this because in my next few videos what I'm going to be looking at is motion up and down an inclined plane both smooth and rough okay and we'll look at other motion that is not necessarily in the vertical plane or in an inclined plane say a skier going up and down a hill Okay, well that brings us to the end of this particular tutorial then.